So that's what I want to talk about that I've mentioned that I kind of thought about because I saw people mentioning it on the comments of the clip that I've just uploaded. I find it really interesting. I'm finding it very interesting just seeing and it's been kind of really odd to kind of meditate on because I've actually got the book recently I think I mentioned it beforehand and I'll be doing actually I may even do it just now um I recently had this delivered um which is the autobiography of um Joey Diaz it's called Tremendous the life of a com- comedy savage uh by Joey Coco Diaz and Erica Florentine if I'm not mistaken it's actually the comedian Jim Florentine's daughter if I'm not mistaken so she helped um write and kind of co write this um, autobiography by Joey Diaz. If you're a fan of Joey Diaz, you would know that he's been writing this for a while. It's been in the works for a long, long time and it's finally got put together. I'm assuming if this goes well, more than likely he's going to be you know, able to sort of option this for TV series and stuff coming up. Maybe something else, maybe movies. So this is a lot. There's a lot of potential in this book, but I think it's just nice in general to have some guy that we all kind of know and love in the comedy scene legitimately put a sort of book together and kind of you know documenting his upbringing and whatnot and putting it into wax so you know putting it onto paper so so we can kind of go back and sort of read so i got this delivered recently ordered it on pre-order and it recently dropped and actually what i might do i might actually just read a couple of the first pages actually and see what the vibe is saying so it's split up into parts it's got part one early years part two criminal life uh part three comedy yeah, let's actually read the introduction just read the introduction Read quickly, read the introduction here from Joey Diaz's Tremendous Life of a Comic Savage. So it said, a comedy savage. It says, I grew up seeing firsthand what it meant to hustle. My mum never fucking skipped a beat. I tried to take a leaf out of her book, and I'll be real with you. My life became a shit show for a while when my warped motivation for hustling led me down some dark paths. Like once on my coke bender, I got so paranoid I called the cops on myself multiple times. Oh, and I've obviously kicked that a guy, but we'll get on to that later. I didn't intend to fall on my mum's wishes, uh, to fail on my mum's wishes, sorry for me, to be a decent American man, or to fail on the hopes for myself, but along the way I did. I failed miserably, and when I eventually found my stride in comedy, things started to take a turn for the better. My past failures became less important, less defining on my character, and connecting with my audience was all that mattered. I'd been doing stand-up for years before. I figured out the special source. One day I woke up, and it just clicked. I started telling stories about the crazy shit I'd done in my life, not knowing how it would land. I was shocked and grateful to find that there were people out there who liked hearing them. I grew a fan base that quickly felt more like family to me than anything else. I was like their Uncle Joey. If you've listened to my podcast or seen or heard of me anywhere else, you know my life stories aren't always pretty. But that was the point in writing this book. I want to tell you as much as I can. Um, the bad mix with the good and the funny with some names and minor details change to protect people's privacy for anyone who might be going through some shit now my hope is that when you've done reading this you'll know that for sure that you can get past it you can find happiness and success in your life trust me i was lower than low in fact i was barely functioning human being at certain points addicted to crime and cocaine but i came out the other side don't get me wrong this book isn't a sub story parts are sad yeah but you need to hear that to understand me as a whole we've all have our crosses to bear and some stories from the early parts of my life are mine as i'm writing this introduction i'm in my home in new jersey my beautiful wife terry is here too and she's hanging out with our daughter mercy who i love more than anything later we'll all have dinner together as a family then i'll smoke some dope and make some notes for our tomorrow's uncle joey's joint podcast i'm living a dream the dream i always wanted to live my uncle Lazo has told me a lot about my father, who died when I was a little kid. Uncle Lazo said that my dad and I were similar in lots of ways. We looked similar, had the same mannerisms, but mostly we were born to hustle. It seems I have two parents with that mentality. Sometimes I reflect on how I got where I am, and it's really that hustle, but with the right motivation. What you'll notice is that once I found my motivation for changing my life, comedy, I just kept on showing up, day after day night after night i couldn't shut the fuck up i practiced my skill i stayed focused and even when others parts of my life were shaky the hustle nearly killed me in every early parts of my life but the hustle also saved me in the end my advice to you is to do the same 
Just keep showing up. Just keep hustling. Keep doing it with the right intentions. Go ahead and take um, a leaf out of my book besides the hard drugs and the robberies, let's say, and make shit happen. And for anyone who isn't going through tough times and pick up this book to have a little fun, let's fucking do it. I've got a lot of fun shit to tell you. In fact, sitting down to write this book, I realize there's so much to say, so much I want to share with you guys that I could write 20 books based on my life experiences alone. It has been a hell of a ride. Enjoy, cocksuckers. Brilliant intro, isn't it? Brilliant one page and a bit intro. So a really good way to kind of intro the book. And from what I can hear so far and breaking it into three chapters, I think there's far more to Joey's story than three probably chapters or parts. I feel like there's definitely room for more for sure so i think if this book goes well if it's not going to get option for a tv series or for a movie more like more than likely what end up happening is that he'll probably end up writing more books he'll probably end up putting up you know maybe it'll be, it'll be changed into like a hustler's motivation story maybe it'll be a drug prevention book maybe it'll be his kind of unconventional you know ideas on parenting whatever i definitely see a scope for it so it's kind of cool to see this um happening and it kind of does um it kind of does um oh really coiler says it was option before but wrong producers okay good to know i didn't know that that's definitely good to know that but definitely there's some scope in this for that i think so and the good thing is that this kind of makes me this kind of helps comfort me somewhat because i'm not gonna lie that clip that i played on the previous podcast of joe rogan shutting down joey did crush my heart because it kind of reminded me a lot of my own um of my own sort of like experience that I was kind of going through with a few of my friends where essentially my friendships or was changing in real time and I maybe didn't notice it or maybe I was kind of I noticed it a little bit too late so it kind of hurt to kind of see that happening and you can kind of see it happening a little bit with Joey Diaz and I kind of felt sad for him but it kind of does make me feel somewhat okay about it because clearly as much as Joe was moving Joey Joe Rogan's moving a different direction with his life. I feel like Joey Diaz is also moving a different direction. I don't think he would have written this book or completed it or moved to the direction that he's in if he didn't go to New Jersey. And he's in a whole entirely different space. He's more in a reflective mood. He's kind of maybe, I don't know, um, taking his licks. He's in a nice sort of space here. And so maybe this legitimately is where he's kind of seeing himself going down in the long term because i can see him doing readings over this going on tour doing readings of this book expanding some stories maybe bringing on tour some people who he's kind of spoken about in the book i could definitely see this being a thing going forward and again um if you were a little bit sad and bummed out that you witnessed the death and the end of joey diaz's relationship with joe rogan the way we kind of knew it to be i think it's nice to see that the rebirth of Joey Diaz is also taking place in this book also in the same place or in the same space that Joe Rogan's rebirth happening with the comedy store new, the new story comedy mothership he's got I feel like this book is a symbol of Joey Diaz's rebirth also um, into whoever the person is he wants to become after this whether it's you know executive producer a flipping motivational speaker whatever it may be he's got definitely some decent prospects for him going forward so really um, happy to that I've got the book and I kind of pre-ordered it because I don't usually pre-order books so this is definitely a bit of a departure for me so i'm happy um that i finally got it and i'm going to be tearing through this this week on top of all the other books that i've obviously purchased for this month as well so really infused by it but again if you haven't purchased it make sure that you do it is tremendous the life of a comedy savage by joey coco diaz and erica florentine as you can see here definitely pick it up if you haven't already definitely try and pick it up if you haven't already